all the adoration. Thank you, Father. High and lifted up, Jesus, the Son of God. We crown him now with the everlasting crown. He is the King of kings and he is the Lord of lords. He is the mighty God and is the everlasting Father. Our joy is that he died, he was buried, and on the third day he rose again. And that is why we can stand and declare Jesus Christ is Lord of all. We worship you, we adore you, we exalt, we give you praise. Our coming together will not be in vain today in the mighty name of Jesus. The purpose of our gathering is that Jesus will be exalted and the yokes will be broken. As we lift him up, he will come down in his majesty, in his power, and set the captives free. He will draw all men unto himself. He will bring to pass the desires in the heart of men that put their trust in him. And, oh God, that which you have promised to us in every aspect of life, let them come to pass today in the name of Jesus. Our coming today, we bring testimony to the glory of your name in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, today is the day that you have made and we rejoice and we are glad. Nothing will steal our joy. Nothing will kill our joy. Nothing will disappoint our joy. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, every power that wants to disappoint our inheritance in God, every troubler of our trouble, every troubler of our life, Father, trouble them. In the mighty name of Jesus, every troubler of our glory, Father, trouble them. Every troubler of our relationship with you, Father, trouble them. Every troubler of our children, of our family, Father, trouble them. Every power that says we will not get to our prophetic destiny, Father, trouble them. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Father, we want to thank you. Because when you came and you died and you were buried and rose again, it is settled. Everything concerning any captivity in our lives is already settled. Yokes that are broken, it is settled. Burden that are lifted, they are set to. They will never come back again. The Bible says affliction will not arise a second time. Father, therefore, we, if the Son of God has set us free, we are free indeed. In the name of Jesus, we are free. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. All right, this morning, we want to thank God for another opportunity to gather together. Today, we're going to read many scriptures. And we're going to pray. This season is a season that we must stand on the platform, on the ground, on our legal ground, on our legal ground that Jesus died. Jesus was buried. Jesus, on the third day, he rose again. As he has promised, as he has spoken, it came to pass. And therefore, we are standing on our legal ground that if death and grave will not hold Jesus captive, he came to set the captives free. Everyone that put their trust in him, everyone that believed in his death, in his burial, and his resurrection, everyone that surrendered to him as Lord over our lives, grief will not have dominion over us. Death will not have dominion over us. The power of death, the power of grave is broken completely. And we are going to enforce it together at this meeting today in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord will intervene for us. Today, we're looking at the subtitle under our theme. The theme for this month is Arise, Shine, because Jesus arose. Jesus is shining. He's seated on the right hand of the Father. And we that belong to him, that believe in his death, in his burial, and his resurrection, we must arise and we must shine. And I pray that you will arise. Your family will arise. Your purpose will arise. Your businesses will arise. Your job will arise. Your home will arise and shine in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Your community will arise. Those things that have plagued your community and they've tagged where you live and your environment or your, your foundation, they've said that nothing good can happen with you. I say today, you will come out of that and uh, you will shine in the name of Jesus Christ. 
Shining is not exclusive to anybody. When sun shines, it shines over everybody. Are we together? And when anybody is able to shine, you can also shine. Are we together? All the, the, the Bible says clearly, we are the light of the world and the salt of the earth. So that is to everybody. So for those who believe in the word of God and have accepted Jesus as Lord, and you can stand on your legal ground that if God say you are the light of the world, definitely you will arise, you will shine in the name of Jesus Christ. So we took our theme from Isaiah 61, Isaiah 60 from verses 1 to 3. And I'll read our theme. And uh, today we are looking at, under the theme, we are looking at um, Jesus came to set the captives free. Jesus came to set the captives free. Jesus came to set the captives free. Then we will uh, get to take understanding and revelation in the word of God that the purpose of the coming of the Lord Jesus, that he will save his people from their sin. He will destroy the power of sin. He will destroy the power of him that has grip over the life of the people and he that used temptation and sin to accuse the people of God, the power will be broken over his life so that the captives shall be set free. And as Jesus came and no power, no sin, no devil, no death, no grave could hold him bound. <laughs> Everyone in Christ is going to be set free today. In the name of Jesus, you're already free the day you gave your life to Jesus. We are just going to enforce the inheritance of liberty, of freedom that Jesus has given to us when he died on the cross. So there is no more captivity in any believer that believe and surrender to Jesus. Amen. Jesus came to set the captives free. We are reminding ourselves. So Isaiah 60, let's read that, verses 1 to 3. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. Verse 2, see, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Say amen. Verse 3. Nations will come to your light. Amen. <laughs> and kings to the brightness of your dawn in the name of Jesus. Why? Because God has risen upon you. His light will continue to shine over your life and overcome every powers of hell in the name of Jesus. No matter the gross darkness you are coming out, from that darkness today, no matter how long it has been, the yokes of darkness be broken over your life today. For Jesus has set you free, and that freedom is your portion. We enforce it today together upon this platform that the barren will keep house and become joyful mothers of children. Those who are unemployed, you will get the job. In the name of Jesus, those who want to start business, the door will be opened unto you to start the business that will make you profitable and be a blessing. Those who want to marry, the bone of your bone will locate you <laughs> in the name of Jesus. And speaking scriptures over our lives, you are the head, you are not the tail. Therefore, you will never be under anymore. You will never be put under anymore. You are rising today in the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> that is the word of the Lord. And we are claiming it and so shall it be. In the name of Jesus. But when the Bible says Jesus came in that Matthew chapter 1 verse 21. That his name shall be called Jesus because he came to set his people free from their sin. That simply means from Genesis we know by the scripture that before the fall of man there was no sin. But sin came when man disobeyed and when disobedient 
was carried out by Adam and Eve, the Bible said the consequences or the penalty of that act of disobedience brought about death. Because God said, the day you eat of this fruit, of this tree, you will surely die. And then they did. And then sin came upon them. Without disobedience, there is no sin. We mentioned this in part one on the first Sunday of the month of this April. We said, without disobedience, there is no sin. Without sin, there is no death. Without death, there is no grave. And then in this scenario, Satan is not part of that agenda. He is just a deceiver who will make you to disobey God. He comes at the beginning to make you to disobey. He knows that the very moment you disobey, you will trigger the power of sin over your life. And the power of sin trigger the power of death. And the power of death make you to go into grave. Are we together? So where do you stand is to stand on the Lord's side such that you will stand to obey God. And when you live your life to obey God, I like when the, the discussion was going on in the Sunday school this morning. It was more of obedience, obedience, obedience. And if you keep being obedient, Satan has no foothold or stronghold over your life. The devil has no accusation or legal ground to accuse you because the Bible called him the accuser of brethren, to accuse you before your father, your God in heaven. And so we know that when Adam fell and sin came upon Adam and all his descendants and those mankind yet unborn that came out of Adam, we always carry that DNA. But at the time came Jesus died, came on, on, on the scene and he was sent by God as a sacrificial lamb. And on that occasion, the Bible said that the, the seed of the word of God was conceived in a virgin called Mary. And Mary gave birth to uh, the Messiah. The Messiah is Jesus. And John, uh, Matthew chapter 1 verse 21 simply said before his coming that he will come to save his people from their sin. And now... Sin is in the world through Adam. And then Jesus came to destroy the power of sin over mankind. So for Jesus to set the captives free, we must know this origin. And then we must know how to trace what must we do to enjoy the finished work that Jesus came to do. If not, you will be living in the old and you will not be in the new. The old is the truth of the matter that Adam fell, sin came into the world, all the descendants of Adam, all mankind have sinned, and they are falling short of the glory of the Lord. That's what the Bible says, but it didn't finish there. But Jesus came that we may have life and have life much more abundantly. So he came to terminate the power and dominion of sin. So we are standing on our legal ground, not in Adam, but in Christ. Are we together? Not in the old, but in the new. So let's move on. The, it is very clear from this scenario that I've just explained to us, according to scripture, that every sinner is a lawful captive of the devil because he's the accuser. Everyone that sinned, Satan will and before God to accuse the person. So you become the lawful captive of Satan because he will accuse you as you have disobeyed God and sin has come upon your life. So write it down. Every sinner is a lawful captive of the devil. Sometimes even the Christians will backslide, who does not know they are right, who, who mix things up and, and they are one leg in obedience and one leg in disobedience. And the enemy will accuse you. They accuse you. It will the accuser of the brethren. Are we together? Now, so 
if it is true that every sinner is a lawful captive of the devil, but Christ has come to set the captives free. So he must break the hold of Satan over our lives. And the hold of Satan is the power of sin upon man. And you must understand the easiest way to live our life void of the dominion of Satan or attack or, or captivity of Satan is to live our life in obedience to God. And then sin has no place in our life. And if there's no sin, then Satan have no hold or foothold or accusation over our life. He cannot make us his lawful captive. So how do we do this? To live in obedience. And so we live the life of the new in Christ, where Christ has set us free. Are we together? Let's read some scriptures that will validate this process. Hebrews chapter 2, verses 14 and 15 says, For it was fitting for him, that's Jesus, for whom are all things, that's Jesus, and by whom are all things, that's Jesus, in bringing many sons to glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering, through his death and his burial, and his resurrection. So he makes our salvation perfect. Are we together? And in, and, and, and in, that is verse 10, verse 11. For both he who sanctifies and those who are being sanctified are all of one, Jesus that sanctified, and us that is sanctified are all of one. For which reason? He is not ashamed to call them brethren. That's verse 11. Verse 12, saying, I will declare your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will sing praise to you. Verse 13, and again, I will put my trust in him. And again, here and I, here am I, and the children whom God has given me. This Jesus talking. Look at verse 14. And 15. Inasmuch then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same. Jesus came in the flesh and blood upon the face of the earth so that legally he would die and be the atonement for the remission of sin of mankind once and for all. So he himself likewise shared, shared in the same flesh and blood. That through death, he might destroy him who had the power of death. That is the devil. Through his death, his burial, his resurrection. We must not lose focus of this death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus at this season. It is important for every Christian. It is important for every mankind. It is important to understand that those who are in Christ do can stand on this liberty. We are in Christ has set us free by his death, his burial, and his resurrection. And those who are not in Christ, you have an opportunity to open the door of your heart and invite him into your life and let Jesus be Lord over your life then you have a legal stand on the finished work on the cross of Calvary that his death and his burial and his resurrection has given us liberty. He himself likewise shined in the same that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death, and that is the devil. He has the power of death because sin came upon man, and the wages of sin is death. <laughs> Verse 15 of the Hebrews chapter 2. And release those who, through fear of death, were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Can you see that? When you become lawful captive to Satan, to the devil, you all your life be afraid of death. You'll be afraid of destruction, disaster. You'll, be, you'll panic. You'll be under the bondage of fear of the unexpected. But when you are in Christ, even death, when it comes, will not be able to touch you. Even grave, when it comes, it is not able to touch you. Even sin, 
when it comes, it's not able to touch you because Jesus came to destroy the power of death from him that has the control of death and release those through fear. All the days of their life, they are afraid of the devil. From today, you will not be afraid of the devil anymore. You will stand in the new and live the life of dominion, the life where Christ has set you free, <laughs> the life where Christ has paid the price for your sin, the life where Christ has said, as I walk out of this grave, everyone that are in me walk out of this grave. As he resurrected, everyone that are in Christ resurrected. Or as he seated upon the right hand of the Father, according to the scripture, everyone in Christ has seated positionally on the right hand of the Father. Jesus came to set the captives free. So no more fear of death over your life, over your home, over your family, over your business. Every works of your hand will never die anymore because Jesus has given us life and life much more abundantly is your portion, is your family's portion. Anyone that is sick under the sound of my voice receive the resurrection power and be made whole, be healed, be restored, be quickened and be made alive. If you have sentenced you that medical treatment will not be able to make you to recover from that sickness, I say let God arise for you. By the resurrection power, receive healing in your body. In the name of Jesus, receive a quickening and awakening of your body and come alive and rise up from that bed and rise up from that sickness and begin to take your journey forward. Life is your portion in Christ. For Jesus paid the price. He died so that you will not die. Say, Jesus died so that you will not die. So you will not die but live to declare the good works of the living God. You will not die but live to fulfill prophetic destiny. Nothing will stop you because prophetic destiny is in the future. Prophetic speaks of the future. Destiny speaks of the future. You will fulfill destiny in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We read on in that Colossians chapter 1. And you will see that Jesus has paid the price. And if you can stand in the new, the new is in Christ. The price that was paid on the cross of Calvary in this season, you will be free completely in the name of Jesus. Tell somebody that is free. Somebody next to you, tell him or her, you are free because Jesus has set you free. Jesus came to set you free. <laughs> And I'm just declaring to you what Jesus did. And he did, he did it in, on your behalf. He did it for you. And therefore, stand on Christ. Stand in Christ. And you are free today in the name of Jesus. Colossians chapter 1, verse 14. The Bible says, In whom we have redemption in Christ. Through his blood, in, through Jesus. Jesus' blood. The forgiveness of sin. Yeah, that is the blood atoned for the sin of mankind. It that knew no sin was made sin for us. Verse 15. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. Verse 16. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominion or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him, that's Jesus. So if he has set, if he came to set you free and to deliver you and deliver me from the power and dominion of sin and from the grip of the sentence of death, we are Satan has held us captive. Therefore, all things that were created by God, all things that were made by Jesus belong to us. Verse 17, and he is before all things, and in him all things consist. <laughs> it's good to be in Christ because everything is in Christ. Everything of God, everything in creation were made through the word of God, and that is the living word. His name is Jesus. Verse 18. And he is the head of the body, the church. Who is the beginning, the first, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence. That's Jesus. 
He created all things, having you in mind. And when the enemy came and took over from Adam because Adam disobeyed God, he came and he said, all that God has made is not for Satan. <laughs> you will see the foolishness of Satan as you carry on. And then you will understand that if you keep standing in Christ, if you keep standing in the finished work, if you keep standing in the blood of atonement, you will be set free because you have been free the day Jesus laid his life over 2,000 years ago. And he gave us liberty over the powers of sin. Amen. I'll read on. We get to Colossians chapter 2 now, verse 12. The Bible says, buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who has raised him from the dead. We have been raised from the power and dominion of death the day Jesus rose over 2,000 years ago. Every one of us in Christ Jesus, everyone all over the nations of the earth that believe in the Son of God, you have been raised with him from the dead. Hallelujah. Verse 13. And you being dead in your sins. And the uncircumcision of your flesh. Had he Jesus quickened together with him. Having forgiven you all trespasses. As he quickened together. Verse 14. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances. That was against you, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross, to Jesus' cross. When he was on the cross, all your sin were nailed on the cross. And when he gave up the cause, his blood was made atonement. And the sin on the cross, including your sin, the sin you've done before you gave, you gave your life to Jesus, the sin. After that, the sin of generation yet unborn have been nailed to the cross. And when he was taken out of the cross, he was buried. The sin was on the cross. He was buried. And he made the show of Satan and the grip of death when he died. He appeared in hell and he made a show of them. Look at what he said here. He said in, he said in verse 14, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us which was contrary to us and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. He nailed them to the cross. Look at verse 15. And having spoiled principalities and power, he made the show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. He nailed them to the cross. And when he went to the grave and he went to hell, he triumphed over principality and over powers. And he made the show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. He took the key out of the hand of him that has dominion and the grip of death over mankind because he has paid the price. There was an exchange and the power of lawful captivity was broken when Jesus died. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, let's give clarity of understanding so that you will understand how scripture works for you. Because the scripture cannot be broken. God has given us scripture not to confuse anyone because it's not an author of confusion. Belief and faith makes you to submit yourself to receive the word of God. And peradventure, you don't have understanding of how the word of God works for you. And you have your belief. That's good. The more interaction, the more fellowship with the Holy Spirit, the Bible says it's our teacher. It will teach you all things. So as we are learning of this word, the Holy Ghost is here to teach us all things. No man can teach the word of God for you to have an encounter except the Holy Spirit enables you. The conviction that we get in our spirit to believe the word of God and to act upon it and it produces for us is the help of the Holy Ghost. Now look at this. In Genesis chapter 3, the Bible said, at the beginning, Satan was the tempter. If you read from verses 1 to 7. In the, at the beginning, Satan was the tempter. Who tempted man to fall? In Genesis. Are we together? 
he said, you will not surely die. And he tempted man, um, man fell in Genesis at the beginning. See, today, number two, see, today, Satan still tempts man. Man, there is plural. He still tempts man, male and female. He still tells, he tempts man to sin. See, today, if you have time, read that Ephesians chapter 4, verse 27, or 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Satan is a roary lion looking for wood to devour. <laughs> He's a tempter. <laughs> so, sin is what enslaves man. Then Satan jumps on it and holds man captive. Now you have sinned. And so, you have been separated from God because when you sin, there's a separation between you and God. So he jumps on you and he becomes your lawful captive because he is a sinner from the beginning. He is the father of sinners. He is the father of liars. He jumps on you. So from the beginning, sin, the sin of Adam and Eve became the sin of all. Read that in that Romans chapter, Romans chapter 5 verse 12. The sin of Adam and Eve became the sin of all. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of the Lord. But consequently, when we are born into Adam, we carry the transference of that DNA of sin on, the, on mankind and the bondage of sin follow mankind till date. For those who have not understood that the first Adam was in the flesh and the second Adam, Jesus, is of the spirit. And remember, Without sin, no death. <laughs> Without death, no grave. Remember that. Remember that. Put that in perspective. So, invariably, Satan certainly can bring death and destruction into man if there is sin upon the man. It can hold you as a lawful captive if there is sin upon your life. But without sin, without sin, it has no grip over your life. He has no control. <laughs> the Bible says, for the wages of sin is death. It didn't finish there. Romans chapter 6 verse 23. <laughs> Romans 6 23. For the wages of sin is death. It didn't finish there. And then, don't, don't give a foothold to Satan because you have sinned. Because it didn't, it, when he accuses you, go to God <clears throat> and confess your sin. And he said, for the wages of sin is death. For Jesus has paid the price for the atonement of our sin. And so this scripture is reconfirming it for the wages of sin is death. Definitely, death comes when there is sin. But thank God for the birth. Thank God for Jesus coming. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Hallelujah. The wages of sin is dead. The accuser will jump on you. The devil. And they want to have lawful captivity over your life. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. As soon as you remember that you belong to Jesus, he came to set you free. You can say to Satan, I have, I have sinned against God and I repent of it. Let the blood of the everlasting covenant and forgive me my sins. Right there, the atonement speaks for you and Satan will lose his grip over your life. Praise the name of the Lord. The wages of sin is there, but the gift of God is eternal life is in Christ Jesus. Satan's mission after he fell in heaven was to tempt man. Why will he come upon the face? When he fell in heaven, he was kicked out. And the Bible records that one third of the angels followed him and they became fallen angels and they became demons. There was no demons before. And uh, the one thought became demon. And they followed him. So it's when he fell in heaven and he was cast out, out of heaven, and he was on the face of the earth. And because he fell, you know his mission is looking for those that he's going to recruit to himself <laughs> so that they will fall the way he fell. <laughs> Are we together? So, so he, he understood the value when he was in heaven. 
and anybody that is heaven bound, it will, it will pursue after you and find a doorway where you can, it can deceive you as it, de it deceived Eve, as it can cause, cause, you to, cause you to lose focus of your relationship in God and now begin to disobey God instead of obedience to God. Get you to get to a point where you become so over familiar with God and you do things contrary to his will and you are saying to God, there's nothing you can do about that. But it gets you to a point where your heart becomes hardened because you are exposed to all other doctrines contrary to the truth of the word of God. And then you begin to think, after all, you is, is your life. You can do whatever you like with it. And that is deception from the pit of hell. Are we together? Because he's looking for who to recruit. You know, the day I read in the Bible that hell was not made for mankind. Hell was made for Satan, the devil, and the fallen angel. And that was the day I made up my mind. I will not go with Satan to hell. And it's better for us to make up our mind, everyone. Hell was not made for any mankind hell was made for satan and the fallen angels and those who believe in satan will follow the same way and so don't join them to go that way are we together praise the name of the lord so he his mission is is to is is to see how he can cause man to disobey god and separate god and, and separate man from god and then Jesus here is to reconcile man back to God. Can you see that? He is to, he is to cause separation between man and God. And Jesus came to reconcile man back to God. And then you have to make up your mind. Do you want to belong to Satan that will separate you from God? Or you want to surrender to God through his son, Jesus Christ, who has come to reconcile you back to God? Jesus came to set the captives free, to reconcile man back to God, to give us dominion and give us liberty over the power that separates us from God. <laughs> Are we together? The good news is very, very clear that Jesus died and he rose again so that we can be free from sin. And so it is important to understand that the day Jesus died on the cross, Christ broke the cause of sin that was translated by Adam to every mankind. Jesus broke it <laughs> so that he can reconcile all back to God. And I, and I like that Corinthians when he said that we, we, we have been given the ministry of reconciliation. He reconciled us back to God. And when they left, he said, continue it. Oh, everybody, everybody that Satan is trying to separate their relationship with God, that we should encourage them to have, a, to have a relationship with God, to be reconciled back to God instead of being separated from God. I pray that you will take a decision today and surrender your relationship to God, not to be separated from God in the name of Jesus Christ. No longer slave to sin. No longer slave to unrighteousness in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 5, verse 12, therefore says, therefore, just as through one man sin, through one man, sin entered the world, and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men because of sin. Can you see that in the beginning there was no power given to death, but sin gave power to death. A man give power to sin when man disobeyed God. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 5, 19 for as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners. Listen to this. By one man's disobedience many were separated from God. Sin simply means separation from God. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners. So also by one man's obedience, many will be made righteous. So Jesus came to set us free from the separation and the dominion of Satan over our life to be reconciled back to God. Because by disobedience of Adam, <coughs> we have been separated from God. So obedience. Now write this down. That will help your steps from today if you have been vacillating as a believer. 
write this down. Obedience simply puts Satan, man, obedience, man puts God in control of our lives. Obedience. Man puts God in control of our lives. When we are obedient to God, what we are saying is we give God the control of our lives through his son, Jesus Christ. We put him in control. If we say every day we just obey what God commands, that means who is in charge? God. Whatever he commands, we do. So God is in control. We put him in control of our life to rule and direct us and guide us and enable us and teach us and lead us and make room for us and make way for us and enable us and bring us to the place where he has predestinated for us and make us to fulfill prophetic destiny and make us to walk out of the shackles and chains of Satan and the grip and the hold of Satan be broken. Obedience. And that's what happened in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve. God was in control of their life when they were obedient. And now, disobedience, man puts Satan in control of our lives. You know, that's what we said in the, during, during the last um, messages to live godly life. You, you are in control. It is your choice. You give control to God, you obey. You give control to Satan, you disobey God. <laughs> Praise God. You put God in control of your life by obedience to all that he has commanded. And then you put Satan in control of your life. When you keep disobeying God, then what you are saying is you are obeying Satan. That's what you are saying. Whoever you obey is your master. <laughs> to whomever you obey, you give your right to, to, to lead you, to control you. And then when Satan we want to give you a gift. His gifts are three-dimensional. To steal, to kill, to destroy. And when God that you obey wants to give you a gift, he gives you life and life much more abundantly. You've got to choose who you give control to. Obedience or disobedience. And that's the point. That, that is the clincher. That is, that is the dividing factor of everything. on how to live our life upon the face of the earth. John 8, chapter 36, if a man, if the son shall set you free, you will be free indeed. John chapter 8, verse 36. If the son, if Jesus shall set you free, you will be free indeed. If you submit your obedience to him, you will be free. Isaiah 61, verse 1, the spirit of the Lord God has anointed me to preach the good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the broken hearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, liberty to the captives. And so if you obey Jesus, then you receive liberty in every captivity of life and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. In captivity, when Jesus arrives and you say yes to him, he will deliver you because he came to set the captives free. Can you see all the things that we take for granted and then we say that the enemy and the devil is ravaging our lives because we give him control. You disobey God, you give Satan control. You obey God, you give God control. You obey Jesus, you give Jesus control. He came to set you free. His thought for you is thought of good and to give you a hope and a future. Everything that he has created he did not create them for himself. He created them for you so that you can be in charge upon the face of the earth. And then when you, so you obey him, you give him control, you have access to all that belongs to him. You, give, you disobey him, you give Satan control. That's what happened. I pray today, you will no more be in captivity. Let us pray. Now that you know that you don't belong to the old anymore in Adam. You belong to the new in Christ. You don't belong to the old where is disobedient. You belong to him, that, to the new that is obedient. 
when you give obedience to God, then you put God in control and it directs your path. It leads you in every way. Your prayer have been answered. Your prayer have been effective. You can bind and you can lose. You can walk in the valley of the shadow of death and death will just be looking. He will not be able to touch you. Become untouchable when you give total obedience to the will of God. I want us to pray. Isaiah 49, verse 24 says, Shall the prey be taken from the mighty or the lawful captive deliver? And verse 25 says, But thus saith the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away, and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. For I will contend with him that contend with thee, and I will save thy children. I want you to pray. Whatever is the contention that is troubling our heart, making us to disobey God, Whatever is the contention that is troubling our children, our family, making them to go astray, making them to say there is nothing like God, making them to think that they can live their life. There's no, there's, there's, there's no, there's, they, 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 they came from their parents and there's got nothing to do with God. Let God, let God step into that matter right now. For he came to set the captives free. Let's pray and decree and declare God. You say you will contend with him that contend with us. And you will save us, you will save our children. Pray for salvation of your children, of your family, of your extended family, of your parents. Pray for the salvation of your loved ones in the name of Jesus. Even they have told you that there is no God, that you are broken hearted, that you really know you want this, your family member and your friends to know God. Pray for them now. Pray for them now. Pray for, they need your prayer. They need everyone under the sound of my voice who have said there is no God. May you vis may God visit you today in the name of Jesus. No one encounter God and remain the same. I pray to all our children on this platform who have been vacillating and they have been saying that there is no God. May God visit them today in the name of Jesus. Every child that have gone astray, every home that have been in devastation just because they cannot submit to obey God and obey his word. I ask, oh God, that you contend with that devil that is dividing the home, that is dividing the marriages, that is dividing destiny, that is violating our children. We break the powers of the enemy in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let the yokes be broken. Let the burden be lifted. Even the lawful captive, oh God, you said shall be set free. You said the mighty, the, the prayer of the terrible shall be delivered. Contend with them that contend with us. Contend with them that contend with our destiny. In the mighty name of Jesus, give everyone that are praying right now under the sound of my voice, give every one of us freedom, liberty. Jesus has come to set us free. We plead the blood of Jesus for our liberty, that the sick be healed, that the sick be healed, that the broken heart be, 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 be delivered in the name of Jesus, that the captive be set free, that the broken hearted be healed, that the barren keeps house and become joyful mother of children because it is your right and it is your privileges. This is your inheritance to have your own children because you are conceived, you will conceive your own children. Right now, receive the power to conceive. See the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. The captivities are broken today on the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. And the Bible says, and I will feed them the same Isaiah 49, verse 26. And I will feed them that oppress thee with their own flesh. And they shall be drunken with their own blood, as with sweet wine. And all flesh shall know that I, the Lord, am thy Savior and thy Redeemer, the mighty one of Jacob. Ask God to show his power in your circumstance. Ask God, show your power in my home. Show your power in my business. Show your power in my workplace. Show your power in my children. Put show your power in my community. Everything that you want to change, everything that you are asking God to cause a change, 
either the things that are yesterday, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, the things that you have tried, you have prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and it has not worked today, it will work. Because Jesus came to set the captives free. In the name of Jesus, he said, I will feed them that oppress thee with their own flesh. Every oppressor of our lives, let the power of oppression upon our lives is broken. Every mental oppression, every physical oppression, every financial oppression, <clears throat> every marital oppression, oppression be broken today. In the name of Jesus Christ, we command every power that have entered into our destiny and is trying to manipulate our glory and the covering at the purposes of God for our life and making us not to arise and shine and making us to begin to beg and borrow on a daily basis before the end of the month the the provision that God has given unto us has never been enough. And he said, we are blessed and will be a blessing. I decree today, everyone under the sound of my voice, today you will be a blessing. From today you will be a blessing. In the name of Jesus, as you take your step from today and you believe God, I decree that the things that were not enough will be more than enough. In the name of Jesus, you have more than enough. Provision come to your house. Provision come to your home. Provision come come to your businesses, provision come to your job, provision come to your marriage, provision come to your ministry, provision come to your life, provision enter into your door. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will no more lack, you will no more beg. That property that you are planning to buy, the law will supply the provision. The house you are trying to build, the law will supply. The business you are trying to start, the law will supply. Wisdom shall be the stability of your life. Knowledge and character shall be the stability of your life. You will be favored amongst all men. In the name of Jesus. For this is the reason why Jesus came to set us free from stagnation, from oppression of Satan. You are delivered today. In the name of Jesus, the power that has held you bound before today, they are consumed by the fire of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, the Lord contend with them that contend with you. In the name of Jesus, the Lord take over your battle of life. In the name of Jesus, the God of Jacob set you free. In the name of Jesus, the covenant of the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob begin to work for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, if God will enter into the house of Abraham and say to Sarah, by this time next year, you will have your own baby. Today, by this time next year, you that are barren, you will have your own baby. In the name of Jesus, and you will testify. The things that have been impossible as God of all possibility comes into your life today. All things shall be possible with you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, precious Father. We gave you praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Father, I want to thank you. Because Jesus came to set the captives free. No more captivity in our lives. No more redundancy in our lives. No more setbacks in our lives. No more stagnation in this house. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, every bitterness is over. Every power of the enemy manipulating the glory of our children is broken in the mighty name of jesus christ where there seems to be no way that the enemy has blocked the way oh god we put those the enemy we put those the way we say let there be way for us where there seems to be no way and the desires in the heart of every one of us that have been crying unto god we agree with you today they shall come to pass today in the name of Jesus, you are blessed and highly favored. In the name of Jesus, arise and shine. Arise, shine. <clears throat> the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. In the name of Jesus, those that knew you not, they will begin to do you favor. In the name of Jesus, in that community where you are living and you think you've been isolated, nobody wants to do any good thing with you today, the Lord will favor you. And you'll be sought after. You'll be sought after. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. I call you blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. amen and amen. Praise God. Let's welcome everyone as I invite my wife. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Reverend, for that word, you know. 
it, it, it's just what we need at this time. Thank you so much, sir. Listen, no more captivity. No more captivity. All you need to do is just to believe it. Remember, believe and you will see it come to pass. Because Jesus has made do with every captivity. So you know what you need to do? Tell everyone that there's no more captivity in the lives of your children, in your life, in your um, workplace, at your workplace, in every department of your life. No more captivity. Even the sickness of captivity is taken away right now. In the name of Jesus. The captivity of joblessness is taken away right now. In the name of Jesus. The captivity of reproach is taken away right now. In the name of Jesus. Listen, I decree and I declare into your lives that no more captivity. And as a result, you will arise you will shine in the name of Jesus. Because you know what? Jesus has set you free. And you are free indeed. Hallelujah. So shall it be for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, if you have just said that prayer and if you have actually been blessed by what you've heard, I want you to share it. You can share it to about 30 people. And because you have done so, you will be blessed. The Lord will bless you richly. Send it as a gift. Share it to a friend as a gift. Send it as a gift. And for those that might be thinking, what are we talking about here? The joy of the Lord is what is keeping us standing. And if you want to be part of that joy, and you don't understand all the things that we are talking about, you might think it's all gibberish. I want you to actually say this prayer with me if you want to come to an understanding of the fullness of what we are actually experiencing which is the joy you know the joy of the lord you just need to give your life to christ and you know what jesus will take you by the hand and lead you so if you're ready to do that with me why don't you say just this little small just simple prayer oh lord i thank you for saving me. I thank you for giving me this opportunity to represent my life back onto you. Lord, come into my life. Be the driver and the architect of my life. As from today, Lord, I give everything to you. 100% take over my life and accept you as my Lord and my Savior in Jesus' name. Wow. If you have said that prayer with me, do you know what? I want to welcome you to a big family of God, you know, where is the kingdom of God, where we have joy, happiness, and all sorts. So thank you and welcome again and congratulations for becoming part of God's big kingdom. Until we come your way next week, Sunday, this is the Amazing Grace Christian Center where we watch where we preach, where we teach. And do you know what? Keep safe and keep praying. God bless you until we see you next Sunday. Bye-bye.